All right, hey everyone. We having a good night so far? Yeah? Cool, so first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. It's great to see some of my very favorite former students, and I'm looking forward to spending some time with you guys. Uh, but it's also great to always have an opportunity to meet prospective New Holt students. And what I really want to do tonight are two things. I want to provide some context for you, because when you graduate from Holt or wherever you graduate from, you are going to be entering into an economy that is nowhere near what it was like for your father or mother or grandparents. Okay? We are living in a world where businesses are being disrupted every day. Even Snapchat today announced they're laying off 10% of their engineers. It's the third time Snapchat has gone through a significant layoff. Okay? So even the disruptors get disrupted. Why does that matter to you? Imagine that you were working at Blockbuster at the time that Netflix appeared on the scene. Imagine that you were working at Gillette when Dollar Shave Club arrived on the scene. Okay? The choices that we make early in our careers have a tremendous imprint on our professional success or failure. And if you go into the market unaware of what is happening in your industry, you are more than likely to wind up in a company that is in a downward spiral. So I'm going to do two things tonight. I'm going to take the first half of our talk, and by the way, this is completely interactive. I don't want to lecture to you. I want to have a dialogue with you. It's a very different experience, okay? But I want to set the context for what's going on out there in the world today, and I will base it on the 200 days I travel every year, so I do get to see a bunch of stuff. Okay? And it's not just from Boston to New York, it's, it's all around the world. And then I want to give you a peek into the whole classroom, at least from my perspective, so that you can see how one Hull professor tries to prepare their students for competing, winning, and, and ultimately thriving in this digital economy of ours. Okay? So, a little bit about my background. Uh, I started my career as an engineer in Silicon Valley with Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard. You may or may not know the founding story, but Silicon Valley was basically started by Hewlett Packard in 1939. Okay? And the Silicon Valley uh, landmark of the Hewlett Packard garage is considered to be the birthplace of Silicon Valley. To be in Silicon Valley and to work for Bill Hewlett and Dave Packard was an extraordinary privilege and an incredible launch pad for the rest of my career. So I did that for four or five years, had a remarkable experience, went back to Yale, got my MBA, worked for McKinsey here in the city at Park Avenue and 52nd Street for three and a half years, and then I started doing something that I absolutely love. I was involved in the formation of eight venture capital-backed startups. I've completed seven. I'm now chief marketing and strategy officer of my eighth. My current startup is headquartered in San Francisco and Tel Aviv, Israel, and I live in Boston. So you can imagine that my commute is a little longer than taking the, uh, the train in from, from uh, Long Island or from Connecticut or from New Jersey. Been lucky enough to have taken two of these companies public on the NASDAQ and to have sold all seven to strategic acquirers. I did spend a couple of years as a corporate CMO. I was the chief marketing officer of a publicly listed New York Stock Exchange traded company, Parametric Technology Corporation, now known as PTC. PTC is a company that is in the engineering software space, currently valued at about $8 billion on the New York Stock Exchange. Okay? Uh, the McKinsey experience I spoke about, but I also spend a lot of my spare time, to the extent that I have it, consulting consulting on innovation to large companies around the world. Okay, so I've worked with Accenture and AT&T, Dell. I was in Italy this past October with both Ferrari, and I'll be talking about Ferrari, and with, um, with Pirelli. I've done work with some of the caring luxury brands like Gucci and Prada and Puma and Stella McCartney. And for those of you who enjoy beer, uh, SAB Miller. Pratt Whitney Aircraft, which makes jet engines. So I spend a lot of time on both sides of the coin. One side is looking at the incumbents that are being disrupted and helping them to understand how they may defend against disruption. And of course, on the other side, 
thriving on being a disruptor in my own startup and serving on the boards and investing in young startups, including former Hulk student startups, that are creating disruption. Okay. So, I'm going to talk about this later, okay? I'm going to talk about the 11 Holt students that are now working directly for me and the global award we won for having the most innovative marketing organization in the world. But we'll get to that later, okay? So, and then last but not least, I spend a lot of time publishing and blogging and posting on matters related to innovation, right? So one of the things that you heard from Brittany is that whole professors are practitioners. Our job is to bring our daily practice into the classroom, okay? To bring an opportunity to learn with your hands and your minds, to drive experiential learning, okay? So, let's go back to that blockbuster example, okay? I'm a big history fan. At, at one point, when I was a young kid, I thought I wanted to be a history professor until my history teacher said, Mike, don't do it. I'm driving a taxi on the weekends. You'll never have a great, a great life. But I love history, and one of the great uh, historians is Paul Kennedy, and he wrote a book called The Rise and Fall of the Great Powers. Now, he was talking about city-states and nation-states. He was talking about the fall of the Greek Empire, the fall of the Roman Empire. He could have been talking about the fall of the Fortune 500 Empire, because that's really what's been happening. Okay, so if you look at, since the year 2000, over half of all Fortune 500 companies have vanished. And it wasn't due to some magic act, okay? I do, in fact, have a cousin who goes by the same exact name as me. He lives in Pittsburgh. He's a very famous magician. He's on TV. He sells out big stadiums all around the world. But it wasn't him that made this happen. It was complacency. It was apathy. It was fear, fear of change. The amount of fear in corporate suites is mind-bending. The level of paralysis, the lack of agility, will blow your mind. Okay? Anybody read Dilbert? Yeah. Dilbert is true. Okay? The, the characters that you see in Dilbert represent the real world. It used to be that if you were a company that had achieved a level of maturity and scale and had become a Fortune 500 company, you would have considered yourself invincible. You would have considered yourself immortal. We have got to, we've got to the top of the mountain, but that no longer holds true. 